Hi everyone and welcome to my channel if this is your first time here. Welcome back if you are a returning viewer and this is one of a series of cozy things chats where I get to speak with friends about the different things in their life that they find cozy and there's a whole variety of different ways that people can uh, feel cozy, different things that they like and just feel safe. And uh, there's so a fair amount of nostalgia in these lists. And I just love having even more things to utilize um, to make kind of a crummy day feel cozier. And I am really delighted to be joined by Janelle from Too Fond of Books. Thank you, Janelle, for being willing to be a guest. Well, thank you very much for having me. I love your cozy chats videos. They're always just, they're cozy in and of themselves. <laughs> yes, this is this is all like one giant scheme just to get more coziness in my life, to record these, then put them up, the whole thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes, so Janelle um, has, uh, she well, one, she's like a mystery reading queen on her channel. So, and also, during March Mystery Madness, when she's one of the hosts, she's been putting up a video a day and has been spoiling us for all the mystery content. Uh, she also enjoys historical fiction and mm -hmm. some Victorian literature. Uh, mm -hmm. So you're, you'll be in for a real treat if you stop by Janelle's channel. And also she is on Instagram. So I will link all of the things down below. Um, so Janelle, I guess, shall we jump into the list? What is the first maybe thing or category that you have on your list. All right. Well, the first thing I have on my list is tea. I love tea. I find it so cozy and comforting and there isn't a day goes by where I don't drink tea. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So, and um, I'm, I'm so like, I guess kind of regimented. I'll have, I have black tea in the afternoon and herbal tea in the evening. That's the way I go. I, I love, love that. I especially love Earl Grey. Um, and if, if I can find like vanilla Earl Grey or creamy Earl Grey, it's even better. Or London Fog Ooh. Oh, is yes. so good. And London, London Fog is Earl Grey with what? With basically just heated milk put oh. in. So like if you buy it at Starbucks or whatever, when I make it at home, like I, I quite often will just... Um, I don't bother heating the milk because there's just so little of it. It's it's not worth right. it. But I had a, a tin of of London Fog, which was wow. I think it's Earl Grey, but maybe with a certain a few extras, mm -hmm. um, just to make it more delicious. Oh. I also really love um, fruit black teas, which are oh. something I recently discovered. But so they're so delicious. So for example, my favorite kind right now is this one. It's passion fruit, oh. passion fruit, black tea. And it's so good because the passion fruit flavor is like, it's delicious. Yeah. And I love where I found this too. There's a little, um, Eastern European store in our neighborhood, all the products in the store are imports. Uh -huh. And so this is actually from the Ukraine. Um, wow. but it is so, so delicious. Um, I love it. Oh, and that's then in so the, cool. Yeah. And then in the evenings, I like my herbal teas and I'll drink pretty much anything for herbal tea, but I do, I do really like the fruit flavors as opposed to the, I don't know, like the other flavors. Chamomile like, or I've never, I, it's like, I want to like chamomile, especially because it's the tea that Peter Rabbit's mother gives to him um, when he's sick. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it just, chamomile and I don't get on. <laughs> no, me neither. And I mean, passion fruit seems to me to be like the thing that I love with tea because that's my favorite herbal tea I found. And this is hilarious because it's not, it's like two stores down from the the import store which i don't know if i mentioned but it's called mcsmack which is hilarious <laughs> hilarious <laughs> but two doors down there's another one but it's south american mexico brazil argentina wow and i found a, a little packet of passion fruit tea from brazil that was so delicious oh. so now it's my favorite that's yeah i love that one that is a whole world of teas you have access to there. <laughs> it's true, actually. I love going around the world because I also love rooibos tea, which is from South Africa. I love Africa. rooibos tea too. Yes. So good. 
Yeah. yeah. And that is South African. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. South Africa, Botswana. Yeah. It's Very made, cool. they make it from a bush there. I don't mm-hmm. know what the technical name is um, yeah. of the bush, but if you read the number one ladies detective agency, whenever she talks about drinking bush tea, that's rooibos. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because I'm like, not, you know, not the Australian bush. Like I'm confused. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So that's my first thing. I love the tea and I love curling up under a blanket with my tea and reading, reading a book. That's like one of my favorite things. Right. So, you know, the Jane Austen quote, is there any felicity in the world superior to this? Definitely applies to that scenario. Perfect. Yeah. 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 So that leads me really nicely into my set, the second thing on my list. Perfect. And that is my cozy blankets, my cozy quilts. I mm-hmm. have a couple that I use all the time. The first one is this. This was made for made for me by a friend, um, a friend of oh. ours. And it's just, it's so fun. Look at the back. Oh Isn't my that goodness. Nice? So I love that one, but. The one that I've been the most cozy with, I have spent a lot of time under this quilt this past year, especially is this one because it's flannel. Oh, yeah, that definitely seems good for cooler months. Yeah, so in the winter, especially, um, I spent a lot of time under this quilt. Um, It was it was given to me by a really good friend of mine and they're they're made by it's a volunteer group and they make quilts for um, for cancer patients. Basically, that's that's all they do is they make quilts for. And uh, so, yeah, so I mean, it was a it was a great gift, but it is the coziest, coziest thing. Oh, wow. There's nothing like a handmade blanket. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay, right. so the third thing on my list um, that I find cozy, it's kind of going in a different direction though, um, <laughs> but I love cooking with my husband. I cook with oh. my husband every day and wow. I just, I love it. I love that we cook together. We have our, our big meal at noon instead of at supper time. Mm-hmm. So the middle of the day uh, at lunch, we cook together and it's great. I just, I just love it because we um, we're pretty adventurous, I think. And mm-hmm. like, we love combining ingredients and finding new flavors and yeah. So it's just one of our, uh, my favorite thing. I, I know he likes it too. We love cooking together. It's, I love it. It's cozy. That's very um, European of you. I feel like to have the biggest meal in the middle of the day. Yeah, um, it could be European. Yeah, I mean, it just works out because we're, we're both at home. You know, mm-hmm. he works from home and and we it, we just thought too, like it just makes sense, right? That the meal that has the most calories yes. is had in the middle of the day, right? So you have the rest of the day to use those calories yes. when you might need them the most. <laughs> yes, no, it's very true. And also I'm impressed that you guys have a, uh, I don't know, the, a dynamic where you can work together well while cooking a meal because I usually get pretty frazzled and I don't really like help. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like, it's weird. I enjoy cooking, even though it stresses me out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, that's really cool though, that it is so, you know, you figured out a way to work together and it's just an event that you, you can both do together. Yeah. Yeah. We love it. Here's one of our favorite things. Um, this sandwich on here, it's a Vietnamese sandwich um you make it with pork so like a thin pork chop and pickled Mm -hmm. carrots and cucumber and uh sriracha mayo it's so good so and this is what we do oh yeah it's the combination of flavors and that's what Aaron brings to the party he is so good at that at the Mm -hmm. combination of flavors but this is what we do we take stuff from cookbooks or restaurants and then just kind of tweak it or like, mm. you know, make it work to make it at home. Yeah. Uh, that's something we really enjoy doing. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. So, it, and is there any cuisine from, you know, a certain country that, that you kind of, is Vietnamese the one that you have kind of explored the most? 
you know what's funny it we're kind of all around the world that way because like we discovered portuguese chicken when we were in Ooh. england because we went to nando's we loved it and we're like what is this this is amazing we need to <laughs> investigate this right and so we make that a lot piri um mm. it's made with piri piri which is a, a hot pepper um Ooh. And it's so good. And so we love that. So that's Portuguese. Um, but we also oh. love like um, certain stir fries. Very, they have to be very specific. <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, Japanese, China, that kind of, that kind mm. of thing. But we also love pasta. And yes. I mean, really, it's, it's kind of really around the world. <laughs> yeah. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, have you ever made German potato dumplings? Mm, maybe, maybe. Aaron's family is German. Okay. So we have made a lot of German food, but I guess it depends, maybe depends what you mean by German potato dumplings. The ones that I made before, you boiled potatoes, you softened them, and then you mix them together with I think a little bit of cornstarch and some, some flavorful seasonings, mm -hmm. and then you fry them. Okay. Um, and so my husband's like, this sounds so silly, but it's like the potato flavor is brought out. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think he's more potatoey than normal potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> and there's That's a awesome. kind of, um, tart, uh, dill type sauce that you put on top of them. Um, yeah. So that sounds That's delicious. Amazing. I have not made that. And now I have to go ask Aaron's parents because. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure they're called potato dumplings. I don't know. Obviously the German word for that. I'm sure it sounds like aggressive, whatever it is in German. <laughs> exactly. Aaron's dad was born in Germany. So he's mm -hmm. like a, you know, uh, they're, Thoroughly they're German. hardcore. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> All righty. Uh, so are we at cozy thing number four? Uh, yes. Cozy thing number four is music. Um, I do love, I love listening to music and I love classical music, classical music and opera, um, are kind of my go-tos. Oh. I love it. Love it. When we lived in Winnipeg, we had, um, season tickets to the opera oh. and I mean, they oh. only did like two or three a year or so, mm -hmm. but it was like, I loved Magical. that. My favorite is Turandot. It's so good. You know what's funny? I have only ever been to one opera and it was Turandot. That was the one that I went to see. Really? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I am good. not well versed in opera, but I really did enjoy my experience then. And just the whole, the whole landscape of the show was yeah. just really special. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's everything, right? Like it's the full orchestra and the cast and the sets and like, yeah. it's so over the top, but that's why it's so fantastic. You know, yes. it's just, yeah. yeah. I love the experience of being to an opera. And of course with COVID and everything, I haven't gone to any kind of a musical event in a long time and I really yeah. miss it, but you know, we have CDs and Spotify and everything so I can get my I can get my fix. I love one thing that I absolutely adore is Ennio Morricone, the, the soundtrack from the mission. My favorite. I adore it. It's so just emotionally powerful. Yes. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. it's such a beautiful soundtrack. It is. I've never seen the movie and I actually have no interest in seeing the movie, but the soundtrack is just like, it's just, it's a, it's so emotional, but there's just moments where it's just so beautiful. Yes. It's just so beautiful, there's you like know, like, and it. often when I listen to this kind of music, like I just have to shut my eyes, you know, you mm -hmm. just, I just let it wash over me, you know, yes. that's, I, that's what I love. That's what yes. I love. Yeah. Um, and the movie is, it's really intense. So I honestly think it's, 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 it's rough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know what the movie's about. And so I'm like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't want to watch that. Yes. I'll just listen to the soundtrack. <laughs> yep. I'm good with that. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, I think like Ennio Morricone and people like him that write soundtracks for movies, they're the classical, they're the classical musicians of our, of our time. Yeah. Like the, I yes. just think they're just, yeah. And then as far Definitely. as Cozy goes, I love Debussy. 
He is just Ooh. beautiful, like Claire de Lune. Oh, okay. That is mm -hmm. one that like, I feel like everyone has heard. Yeah, yeah. And I also really love um, Russell Watson. He's a tenor. Um, oh. And his first, this is his first album and it came out probably in the early 2000s. Um, but what I like about him is that he sings the classics that you expect, mm -hmm. you know, of all the classics from the operas or whatever. But then he also like just, he throws in modern day stuff. So like you raise me up or oh, wow. hilariously um, Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> and I'm sure he does it amazingly. You oh. have to have such a strong voice to sing opera. Yeah. Yeah. So he's amazing. Wow. And uh, so, yeah, he's my favorite tenor. I love listening to him. He also put out an album of like um, Frank Sinatra style. Oh, songs, and I was like, okay, I can totally get into this. This is awesome. Yes. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, something that I heard, or I think even read a, a little article about it. Um, George Eliot's Daniel Deronda is modeled after an opera like the different devices oh. they'll use in an opera. And she was a big fan of uh, Wagner. Yeah. Um, and apparently if you are an opera fan, this really comes through in Daniel Deronda. And um, my brother-in-law is very devoted to Wagner. And so I, I passed the article along to him, hoping it might motivate him to read <laughs> Daniel Deronda. That's awesome. I, I yeah. haven't read Daniel Deronda yet, but I am very interested in reading that one. And so I'll have to keep that in mind. That's very interesting. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'll have another look at the article to see if it has spoilers. And if it didn't, I, I could send it along to you. Okay. It was like. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and then one more, I, okay. I love the violin. I mean, it's, it's hard for me to nail down my favorite instrument, but I think it's the violin. The violin is just so gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And so my favorite violinist, I like Joshua Bell. Okay. Um, his, yeah. So, yeah. So when I want, you know, cozy music or just, just beautiful, like I think it go, it's more on the beautiful side than the cozy side, but I think it fits right. Like the, just, yes. just gorgeous music that almost makes you want to cry it's so beautiful you know yes. yeah I think if it's something that recharges you recharges you that, that counts as cozy mm -hmm. um now on a very silly note <laughs> do you like Gilbert and Sullivan not really um They're like we actually on the Aaron fringes of opera you know <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Aaron and I were talking about that the other day because we were watching, we were rewatching The West Wing, and there's an episode where they talk about Gilbert and Sullivan because they're they're oh. they keep singing one of the songs. Uh -huh. um, he's an English man or something. Oh yes. Okay. And so like, that's a huge part of the show. And then we got talking about Gilbert and Sullivan and I was saying, I don't think I've ever seen any Gilbert and Sullivan. Yeah. It's funny. Um, have you seen Chariots of Fire? Yes. That's, I didn't realize until then I was like looking up some Gilbert and Sullivan songs. There's a lot of Gilbert and Sullivan songs in that. I mean, they have three little mates from school from the Mikado. Right. And then he is an Englishman. They sing that in one part. And then um, there's a song from the Pirates of Penzance when they're traveling really? from England to France that Harold Abrams sings on the piano and everyone is captivated by him. Um, yeah, because they're they're part of the Gilbert and Sullivan like fan club at the university or something. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, it's fun. That's that's sprinkled in. And speaking of a beautiful soundtrack, the Chariots of Fire soundtrack is oh yeah, way way up there. Yeah, that's yeah. true. It's been so long since I've seen Chariots of Fire that I I completely oh. forgot about all those connections. That's yeah. Funny. Oh, it's so good. Such a good film. Yeah, it is. All right. Okay, so. Are we on to five I think so yes five um and this one's maybe a little bit weird uh or whatever but I I think it's cozy is birds like I love oh. our yard has a lot of birds in it because we've got a lot of bird awesome. feeders and bird houses we encourage them um yes. and so but I love like I love listening like when they congregate on in a tree in our yard and you can hear them just all chattering away or singing like I just yes. love that and I love watching them I love watching them in the yard and watching for mm -hmm 
unusual birds because we've got we've got all the normal ones right mm -hmm. but I love keeping my eye out for anything that's unusual in our area so I've got I'm this person I have the bird book and the binoculars <laughs> that's awesome that's so fun because it's yeah. wildlife right there why not you know get, figure out how to identify them and that's really cool mm -hmm. I totally um, do and then I'll call my mom or my mom and dad I'll be like did you know what I saw in the yard <laughs> Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah, we um well we always had cats growing up. So I think mm -hmm. we just thought it would kind of defeat the purpose if we had a bird feeder then. Um, or it yeah. would be kind of bringing them, you know, for, for the cat. Um, but we don't have a cat now and um we have a bird bath in the backyard. Mm -hmm. And so we all get really into it. And it's nice too, because even when we're on the screened in porch, the birds mm -hmm. are not frightened of us being on the porch because they they know that we're kind of enclosed and contained right um, yeah so it's it's cool and then close to migration time we're only about 45 minutes from the ocean and also from mm. then another 45 minutes from a close uh what is it called i mean it's like a migration hub for our birds yeah um and so we do occasionally get some unusual ones um yeah no they're they're fun to to watch yeah i don't know why i just love it and i do i find it really cozy and relaxing like especially when i can just hear yes. them chattering away i'm just like ah. yeah <laughs> no i love it i love it and um and sometimes too it's funny to see they'll go and they'll rinse off in the bird bath and then they'll go take a dust bath immediately afterwards and then they just go back and forth and keep doing the same thing <laughs> so i think it's just fun like i think they're having fun when they do that yeah yeah, yes. I think so. <laughs> yeah, and do you have like a couple of bird calls that are like favorites of yours? Uh, no, and I'm because I'm not that familiar with mm -hmm. birds. Like this is like a fairly recent interest, I would say, like maybe in the past five years or so, it's really, mm -hmm. um, but, and so I'm not as up on the bird calls. I just I know I like really. them. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool, my dad has this book that has, um, I can't remember the number, but I think it's close to around a thousand. So it's a big coffee table book, but it also has this panel on the side of it and you can put in any number and it will play the bird call, um, okay. matching the bird. So that can be a way that's like, you could be like, okay, it's that one. And then you can, you know, <laughs> type in their number and, and see, you know, so you could learn their call. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. I just love like, and the reason I have the binoculars too is because I love getting the close ups because birds are really beautiful. Like when you get close yes. up, look at their feathers, like they are, they can be really, really beautiful. Yes. Yeah, they definitely can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're just used to seeing them like going so quickly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Alrighty, are we on to number six? Yes. So number six for me is Wascana Park. There is a, a large park in the downtown area of our city called Wascana Park, and I love going there. And we haven't been all winter because it's less interesting and much more cold in the winter. Yes, for rigid. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's already I'm intrigued because you're saying it's a park in the city. Mm -hmm. um, it's huge. It's a huge wow. park. I should have looked up how big it is, um, but it's a huge park. So it's where the legislative building is, which is our provincial government building. Mm -hmm. Um, which is already massive. Um, and then it has um, these big, beautiful gardens um, that are gorgeous to walk through in the spring and summer because they put a lot of work into designing these gardens. They're just mm. gorgeous. And then there's a big lake as well. And there's a walking path that now runs all the way around the lake. So you oh. could go, that's what I like to do, go for a walk and walk around the lake. So you see, you see also then a lot more birds. I love that. So, I mean, they've got all the gut, the geese and the ducks, but you can also sometimes pick out like a little more unusual ones. One time we were there and we saw, we had to come home and look it up because we had no idea what it was, but it was a cormorant, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which I wow. only ever heard about reading British books. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah, so I love that. And it's got, like, it's got, um, so they've got boat races on 
on the lake. Um, but mm. you also just quite often just see people out there in, in canoes or kayaks out on the lake. Oh. There's all kinds of areas for barbecues and picnic tables. And there's a big bandstand. Like it's just such a great park. Wow. There's so much. There's a, a beach area where you can launch your boats. And like, there's just so much in the park to do. Um, and I just love, and I just love that it's right smack in the middle of the city. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, just kind of this uh, wild wonderland that is there. Just you wouldn't you wouldn't expect it, but I guess that's a little bit um, like Central Park, you know, mm -hmm. being right alongside Manhattan. Oh, yeah. very cool. That sounds delightful. Yeah. And I hope sooner rather than later, you guys were able to get to it. Yeah, me too. We still have quite a lot of snow, although a really? lot has melted already. So, okay. Um, yeah, it'll be a little bit while longer because, of course, once the snow melts, then you have to deal with all of the mud and stuff. <laughs> you have to wait for that to clear up. <laughs> but soon, soon and very soon, I think. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. Yeah. I'm thinking like, oh, well, you know, now it's March, you can go. But you guys, like, you do winter. You really do winter. <laughs> yeah, I realize it's the 30th of March, but Aaron and I are both, we've both said we fully expect another snowfall before winter is truly over. That usually really? happens. Yeah. Wow. So the snow's never completely gone, usually till the end of April. Wow. So is it more often than not, would you say you have a snowy Easter? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Outside Easter egg hunts were never an option for us. <laughs> so funny like I just Easter in in my context is spring although growing up in Mississippi where it is actually legitimately the climate is called subtropical we had wow. our azalea bushes were like just blossoming over full packed full wow. of azaleas and yeah. up here I've always been like oh it's sweater weather for Easter like very dramatic like I can't believe I have to wear a sweater <laughs> Well, that's one thing I've always thought was hilarious is because Easter is always like equivalent with spring, right? Yes. In everybody's minds, no matter where you're from, Easter is about spring and flowers blooming and all of this stuff. And so we get all of that. And I remember, you know, you go to church for Easter services and there's beautiful flowers in the yes. sanctuary because outside there's still snow. <laughs> it's like you are like the promise of spring. It, it will come at some point. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. You get all the girls in their Easter dresses underneath yes. their parkas. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll hopefully you're we'll see what your prediction is like that you have. You think you, you get the feeling, the sense you have one more storm to go. <laughs> yeah, it'll. it's never bad, though, and the snow never lasts for very long. It's just like kind of that it's way. like it's one more before yes. it's finally over. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, are we to number seven? Yes, number seven. Um, I I was gonna stick with put this in when I talked about classical music and opera, but I realized it's its own cozy thing on its own, and so it's um. Aaron and I love to go see the Regina Symphony chamber players when they play Ooh. at Government House. So it's like, it's a very specific thing, <laughs> <laughs> but it's so cozy because they play. So it's the chamber players. So it's a smaller group. It's maybe 10, 10 musicians. Mm -hmm. um, and they play in the ballroom at government house. So it's very intimate. They have the chairs all set up and you're right there. You're right in front of them. And they'll like, they, they will often talk like they, they'll just chat with you. They talk about the piece wow. that they're going to play and how it was created or a little bit about the, um, the, the person who wrote it and then they, and then they play. So it's this beautiful, intimate setting, which is what makes it feel so cozy wow. so the the government house is um it was built in 1891 and um it served as the residence and office of the lieutenant governor who is the queen's representative in saskatchewan um and then it stopped being used as a residence and and but it's been um completely restored and they restored it to the uh 1898 to 1910 um time period so it's now oh. a museum 
Plus it's still the office. So the office of the Lieutenant Governor is still in the building, but the rest of the building is a museum. You can walk through it and it's restored to what it looked like at the time. Wow. Um, so that's really cool. Plus the, plus the Edwardian gardens, which are gorgeous. So of course only in the spring and summer, but right. like, it's just gorgeous. So yeah. Wow. So even when you're walking into it, you have to walk through the gardens to get to it. Yeah. So it's just, it's just so cozy and, and intimate and fantastic. Oh, wow. Yeah. I hope you're definitely able to do that a couple of times to, in this once spring has finally sprung for you and, and in the summer. Yeah, I mean, we haven't been in a couple of years because of COVID. And so yes. we're really hoping that we can get back to it because it's just it's just the highlight when we can go to to one of their musical yeah. evenings. It's just so yeah, it's so great. Oh, that would be marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so my last three are kind of more classic cozy type things okay. um and so number eight is puzzles i love oh. doing jigsaw puzzles and yeah. so and to me like they're so cozy because what i'll quite often do is i will often have the tv on and i'll be listening to a show mm -hmm. and i'll talk about those in a minute <laughs> while i Yay. do the puzzle and because <laughs> it has to be shows i've seen before so it's my favorites that i'm re-watching because i'm not paying as much attention right yes <laughs> i'm also doing the puzzle <laughs> yes um so i yeah i just i love doing puzzles and i've got some here to show you i think that you will approve these i picked my coziest of my puzzles oh yeah um, and they're based on, and I don't know how familiar, are you familiar with this? I have that book. It's one of those in the stack over there. Oh my goodness. So the country diary of an Edwardian lady, which, I mean, these books are just cozy in themselves, right? Yeah. Like they are Absolutely. just fantastic. Wow. I have that one. And I also have this one, the yes. nature notes of an Edwardian lady. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, these are just as far as cozy goes, you can't get more cozy mm -hmm. than these. Unless, of course, you have the puzzles. Get out. Isn't that amazing? It is. I have no idea. They had made puzzles out of her art. They made one for each season of the year, and I have them. Oh, my gosh. I know, right? And this is where the birds come in because there's so many birds yes. on her puzzles too. I just love it. I just love it. Um, oh yeah. So here's spring. Oh my goodness. All the pastels. Mm-hmm. Oh. And then summer. Wow. I just, I adore them. And what's so yeah. funny is that is how much I love them and how cozy I find them considering how much I don't really like nature myself. <laughs> so you like, like admiring it from afar. I do. I'm not a fan of a personal encounter with nature <laughs> so much, <laughs> but I love it from afar. Like I find her, her paintings and drawings are just beautiful. And yes. I love those puzzles. They're, my, they're the coziest of all the puzzles that I have. Wow. Oh and yeah. Those so much fabulous. Well, yeah, like having a scenic view, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> I remember last year, we actually, we went to the, um, oh, this is going to annoy me, but the, the place, the migration hub for all the birds, it's a, mm -hmm. I think a, a re reserve is, is what they would call it. And I had all these like romantic visions of here we are, we're going to see all these cool animals. And we did, we did see a turtle um, with a bunch of eggs. So that was mm -hmm. cool. And all of these cool crabs that were scurrying sideways. Mm -hmm. um, but there were so many deer fly that were just oh. so incredibly aggressive. Like they yep. would not let up. Um, mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, me and nature, we have a complicated relationship. Exactly. Cause I do love it. And like, and I yes. love like, like a, the forest, right? I yes. love the idea of the forest and yes. I, but until you get in there and it starts getting on you and all the bugs and stuff, but like, you know, being in amongst all the trees and you get the sounds in a forest and yes. like the way that the sun dapples through the leaves, like it's yes. just so beautiful until nature gets on you. That's my problem. <laughs> I don't want nature on me. <laughs> yes. Oh, Yes. No, I, I totally sympathize. Okay. So you're talking right. about then 
for number nine, I guess it is the shows that you like to have on while well, doing that cozy puzzle. Yes. I just have to reach over one second. Sure. So whew, I had everything all set up and so they're so far away. Okay. <laughs> so for cozy shows, um, I'm kind of, these are the ones that everybody talks about, but I love like the Jane Austen adaptations, right? So yes. I have, this is, this is actually like the 10th anniversary, anniversary collectors that is one. Okay. Hit. So, but this, this is the pride and prejudice for me. I know that everybody has their opinion. This is the one for yes. me. Same. I love it. Yes. And, um, oh. hilariously, I love both of them. Like I love the I 2008 too. and I love the, the 95 yes. for different reasons. Yes. Yeah, but I love them both. More smooth sailing with the emotional plot line. The 95 one is safer. Mm -hmm. um, but I just love all the seaside cottage elements of the 2008, I think it is, one. Yep. Um, and I, um, I said this in my Cozy Things chat with Chelsea from Voyage of a Time Wonder, but I'll say it again. That's a bed and breakfast, the cottage that that was filmed at. Oh, yes. Oh, well, yeah. who isn't going to want to go there the next time right. they're in England? <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I know. And uh, honestly, too, the soundtracks from both of them are fantastic. Yes, they really yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. totally. And agree. then I, this is the Emma that I like, oh. the 2000, I think it's 2009. Same for that one, too. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And then I also just adore the Elizabeth Gaskell adaptations. Yes. All I know them. this is not a surprise for you, um, but yeah, I, again, these are just, you know, I, I put them on and just do, do other mm -hmm. stuff. And I just, I love it. Although I get sucked in and then I end up stop doing what I'm doing <laughs> just to watch it. <laughs> but like, especially you say uh, wives and daughters. Um, yes. I love that scene at the end where Roger is talking to her yes. like by the carriage. I honestly, I have to say, I think that is one of the most romantic scenes ever. And they don't wow. even touch. Like, I just think no. it's just so. I know. Yes. Yeah. That, that just to me speaks to an elevated level of storytelling. If they mm -hmm. can make it that way. And like you said, they don't even touch. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's something really magical about that. that scene. Yeah. So those are the yeah. classic ones. I mean, everybody in in these cozy talks would probably say all of those movies as well so I thought I would do a few a few different ones that I find cozy Excellent. Um, th there's some Shakespeare comedies that I oh. love I and I find them so cozy because I just I love the language in Shakespeare mm -hmm. like I love just letting the language wash over me I just find it so relaxing I just mm. love I just love it and um and also the soundtracks in in these Ooh. are like the music is just fantastic so my favorites are this is Much Ado About Nothing from 1993 directed by Kenneth Branagh and it's I mean a lot of it too is the casts like I love the casts in these so I mean what's hilarious about this cast is that it has um Keanu Reeves and Denzel Washington <laughs> <laughs> don't really along, along with them in the Shakespearean the other... context exactly um and a very young Kate Beckinsale is in here oh wow yeah so it's just like and it's just I think what I love about this one is it's just full so full of joy ultimately mm. like it's just so joyful I love that um and it's been also, a very long time since I watched it. Now, I, now I'm tucking that away. I'm going to watch it soon. Mm -hmm. It's so good. And then I love this one of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Oh. So this one's from um, 99. Mm -hmm. And again, just a, a great cast, a, a great mixture of, of people. I love Stanley Tucci and he plays Puck. And so that's oh, just that's wonderful. Yeah. And then um, Twelfth Night from... 96 and this oh. one is my of uh, the music I think this one's my favorite mm. oh it's hard to tell but um I love all the music and I love this one has Sir Ben Kingsley is in this one. Oh wow he plays the fool so good oh, yeah that's so fun 
So I find those very, very cozy. I just have to interject. I um, I just saw Ben Kingsley in a, a film I think you would really enjoy, and maybe um, maybe you've seen it. It's from 1988. It's called Without a Clue, and it has him as Watson and Michael Caine as like a bumbling, idiotic Sherlock Holmes. <gasps> I have never it's, heard of that. That sounds amazing. It's on YouTube for now. So not okay. on like it'll still be on. Um, and Ben Kingsley, the, the Watson character, he just started writing these fictional stories, but involving his like intelligent deductions. And, but then the public comes and is like, where's the Sherlock Holmes? Like we want to meet him. So he hires Michael Caine to act like Sherlock Holmes. And um, it, it's, hysterical amazing yeah Yeah. I'm totally gonna have to check that out that would be amazing yes that sounds so good (laughs) yeah it's just very just very funny and I mean Michael Caine to Sherlock Holmes I was like this is everything I never knew I needed (laughs) (laughs) so amazing I'm totally gonna have to find that now yeah yes yes um and then a few other ones that I that I find cozy I adore (sighs) foils war which you wouldn't think a show about a detective during World War II is very cozy, but honestly, like it is. And it's because of him, like his voice is so cozy to me. Yes. Oh, yeah. And he is, yeah, he's just a very, he's the like kind of restrained English gentleman. Mm-hmm. And, and even too, like when he's rebuking Andrew for kind of how he was not that, you know, he kind of threw Sam over the curb and yeah. or kicked her to the curb. Um, and he just says, you weren't very nice to Sam. And Andrew's just crushed. Like coming yeah. to his dad, he's like, ooh, dad is mad. Like that means dad is mad. <laughs> That's mad. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I also love um, his relationship with uh, with Sam. Yes. Like Sam and Foyle are just, I love that. One of my favorite lines in the whole in the whole show, I can't remember, Sam says something to him when they're driving somewhere and he goes, steady on, Sam. <laughs> Like he's like, don't get so excited. It's just, it's classic of both of their personalities. It's so yes. good. Oh yes. yeah, such a good series. Yeah, and I love the Joan Hickson yes. Miss Marple from the eighties. Oh my goodness, she is the best Miss Marple. I love her so much. She's so yeah. I hadn't watched them until last summer. And I thought, where has this been all my life? Like, I think I honestly was like, I don't know. They look kind of boring. And so I had only watched Marple, the newer ones. Yeah. Um, but those are good. But those are kind of like thriller-esque, like with the mm-hmm. atmosphere to them. And the Joan um, Hickson, is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Those are just so uh, gentle. Yeah. And oh, I love that about them. Yeah, me too. That's exactly why I like those. They are, they're just gentle. And it's, yeah. it's because they're so, they're so connected with her own personality. Right. And so yeah. she never gets like, you know, really excited or really upset. Like she's it's always true. Just so calm. Right. Like, yes. Even when she has a brainwave, she'll be like, oh yes, just solve the case. And then she, you know, goes off on her merry way to solve the case. Also, I do love the like shimmery soundtrack music they do when she has a brainwave. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) yeah, me too. Um, I also uh, find, now this is one, I don't know if you've ever um, watched The Detectorists. Somebody was just telling me about this a couple months ago, but I still, I now I'm remembering, like I haven't um, watched it yet. Okay, so it's a British show um, written and directed by Mackenzie Crook, who is, mm-hmm. he was one of the pirates in um, that Johnny Depp pirate movie. Yes, yes. Okay, <clears throat> so it's him and Toby Jones. And what's funny is the, the premise sounds really boring. It's just two guys who go around the countryside with their metal detectors tr- looking for gold. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is hilarious. It's, it's so funny. It's really, really very funny. But the reason I put it in this cozy category is because of the music and the nature shots. 
And this is why Ooh. I think you would like it. Um, <clears throat> there are so many scenes in the show and they're half hour shows, but there's so many scenes where it's just the two of them out in, in a field somewhere, metal uh -huh. detecting. And sometimes it, it's even in slow motion, but, but the oh. music is just gorgeous. And there's these gorgeous like close-up shots of butterflies or flowers or mm. like there's this there's just this ingrained love of nature that flows mm. through the show you know and then you mix it with the music they had um Johnny Flynn write the theme song and then really? the music for it and it's just it's just the coziest thing ever so it's it's this great combination of like hilarious plots and cozy coziness it's just yeah oh that sounds lovely I'm glad it's you great. reminded me of it I'll yeah to try it yeah so I really I love that <clears throat> and then as, as far as like I don't know why is this that cozy is so connected to nature but it seems to be right there's something just restorative about the beauty in nature it's true. And that's why Rosemary and Time is also on my list for this, right? Because yes. like it's what a what a cozy show. Again, hilarious. Yes. I love that part of it. But yes. like there, and I love that in every show there's somewhere slightly different, and you get a different, a slightly different, beautiful part of nature, right? Because they're in Definitely. so many different kinds of gardens. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, so I love, I love that one too. Yeah. And I love like the they're always very leisurely about getting ready for bed. They'll be like <laughs> absentmindedly like doing lotion on their hands or like just kind of distractedly like brushing their hair before bed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I love that. Yeah, I love it. <clears throat> and then two more. Um, uh, I love Miranda. And it's, I think it's oh cozy God. because I'm so familiar with it. Cause ultimately I don't know if it's so much cozy. At, I just find it hilarious. It's um, so funny. <clears throat> it's ridiculously funny. Yeah, it is. And I mean, partly it's, uh, it's funny because she never takes herself too seriously and she's willing to do anything for a laugh. Right. And she so really I love that, but I, I love, and I think what makes it cozy is, is like how often she's looking at the camera like she you're just drawn so much into the show right like you're in the show because she's always like talking to the camera or looking at the camera yes and so it feels cozy I think for that reason but totally. yeah I love it and the the thing that cracks me up I think one of the most about things about that show is how invested the audience is in her and Gary <laughs> getting together like I have never seen a live audience so invested yes Yes. And I, um, I remember I kind of was a little bit like, I don't want to watch that show because she left call the midwife to do that show. And is that why Tummy, she left call the midwife? Yes. Oh, her character okay. Tummy was like my favorite midwife on that, on that show. Um, and so then finally I watched it. I'm like, okay, this is really, really funny. I, <laughs> I, I'm okay now with the fact that she she left for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Chummy was fantastic. I loved really I loved her on that. Now I did hear rumors that she, that Chummy make might make a reprise. Um, really? Yes, she might come back. And that that's the the nature of the show called the Midwife. It's really conducive to having characters, you know, come and go. Um, mm -hmm. So they have a freedom to do that if they want to. That would be fantastic. That yeah. I love that show too. I love yeah. that show. I never cry. I never cry in books or movies or anything, but Call the Midwife makes me cry. And it makes me mad. <laughs> Why yes. are you making me cry? <laughs> oh but yeah, there's does. some very like, very heartbreaking episodes in there. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. But very, very it's good. also funny because Aaron's often in a different room when I'm watching shows and he always knows when I'm watching Call the Midwife. He's like, <laughs> I'm hearing a lot of screaming. Are you watching Call the Midwife? <laughs> Is someone giving birth again? Yeah. <laughs> it's very funny. Oh. And okay. Then and then the last one more show. What's that? Did you say you have one more show? One more. This is the last one, but um, my absolute oh. favorite show of all time is Seinfeld. And so it's so cozy to me for that reason, because it's so familiar now. Like yes. I can quote all the lines. I know exactly what's coming, you know, in, in That's the show, amazing. but I just oh. love it. Um, 
it's my favorite show and we actually like um rescheduled a, a little bit our honeymoon because of that show <laughs> because was there like a season finale that was going to be on the series finale <laughs> you're like no kate the stakes were much higher oh yeah so our honeymoon was traveling from alberta to ontario which is about 25 hours drive oh, wow and so we thought well we'll just take a week and and drive and that will be our honeymoon and it's i mean road trip great you're you know you're just with each other and it was really fun but and so we didn't really plan out too much of like we need to get from here to here today um except for the the day when we knew that it was the seinfeld finale and we're like we were driving along and we're like it'll be fine it'll be fine we'll come to a town it'll be fine well the the prairies in canada oh. there are very long distances sometimes between towns <laughs> and we realized we were cutting it too close and so we we had to stop at wherever we could and it was this really small town and the <laughs> the hotel was it was a motel that was all they had and it was slightly sketchy but we we're like i don't care we have to get in there <laughs> so we That's were like so we stopped for subway and then we got our room and we're like can you hurry can you hurry and the guy's looking at us like what are you guys doing we're like we gotta get to our room <laughs> <laughs> and we were we were like one minute before it started we made wow. it just in time yeah oh that's so funny <laughs> what a fun memory though yeah so what is the final cozy thing on your list? My final cozy thing, number 10, and you must have been waiting for this to happen because it hasn't shown up yet, are my cozy books. Yay! Yay! <laughs> um, I love reading. I love reading. You're, I'm sure that doesn't come as any kind of a surprise to you. Uh, no so I decided secret. to go through and look at like, what are the books that I have that feel the coziest, that just have mm -hmm. that feeling of being wrapped up in a warm blanket, you know, that give you all the cozy feels. And so first of all, I had to talk about Miss Reed. Miss Reed is the ultimate cozy author, honestly, I think. Um, and this was one that I found and I had never heard of this one before, but this cover, isn't this cover? I am, it's breathtaking. Yeah. So this is the Howards of Caxley, which I'd never heard of before, but honestly, this cover, and look, it goes. Oh, wow. Now, is yeah. it part of a series? Because I know Fair Acre, Thrush Green, right? And then mm -hmm. is that its own thing? I think that it is. I, I need to look it up, but I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen anything else that is like that was Caxley related. So wow. I'm going to have to look it up. But um, but yeah, I mean, this cover is just gorgeous. And yeah, I love Miss Reed. She's the ultimate cozy author, I think. And it's so it's really fun timing you saying this um, because I love the Fair Acre Christmas books. But before <laughs> when I tried the you know thrush green series i've been like oh it's so quiet you know um but i filmed gina stanier's cozy things chat on saturday and she had miss reed on her list i was like you really you know you should give it another try and it was just like magic this time i picked up thrush green and okay one, her writing is stunning yeah um it's the language is so beautiful and rich um, but what I love is I feel like I'm getting kind of all the payoff that you get from a classic with the beautiful language, but it's a lot easier on my brain. So it's not yep. quite the commitment of a classic. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just, I'm very excited about all of the misread fun ahead of me. Um, oh so yeah. That's so fantastic. I'm glad you gave it another shot. The, I, cause <sighs> I, re, I buddy read thrush green with rainy last year. Oh yes. From the, the world book day book battle yeah wow and so that was really fun and i actually haven't gone on to read any more in the thrush green series i intend to but i didn't have the second one on my mm -hmm. shelves and so i and then i just kind of forgot but um yeah we really enjoyed it and it, yeah. it felt it has a slightly different feel to it to the fair acre ones okay. but still really cozy and nice yeah yeah oh cool <clears throat> yeah, so now I'm very intrigued. It seems like the one that you have is a standalone. So I'll be doing I some good reads so. investigating after this. Yes, 
Yeah, yeah. So my next one I got as like, no, maybe like a companion. So I know you love the James Harriet books, yeah. right? The Yorkshire vet books, which I have read and I did enjoy, but not as much because they were all about animals and I'm not a huge fan of <laughs> the <Yes>. animals. <laughs> yes. So the books that I found that are like totally like Yorkshire vet, but mm -hmm. you know, not about animals yes. are the Constable Nick books by so Nicholas Ray what are they? he wrote a huge amount of books set in Yorkshire in the 60s Stop. about oh, Constable Nick and so and they're great because the they do have like an overarching storyline but you kind of get like they're less like little like vignettes of like different things that happen so yeah. in um in this one Constable about the parish one big issue he has to deal with is the grass in the churchyard becomes like this Stop huge it. thing. Get no. out. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, this sounds amazing. Yeah. And so there's this, oh, this whole issue. He, they can't get a lot. They, they're not supposed to use a lawnmower for some reason. And then, but then it becomes like this huge issue of whether or not it's acceptable to have a goat in there because of the <laughs> gravestones. Like it's, it, it was just hilarious. But anyways, um, but yeah, so these are just, they're super oh. cozy. I love that they're set in Yorkshire. Yeah. And uh, you just get, and this is exactly what it is. Tales from a Yorkshire village, Bobby. And they're just. That sounds amazing. Super, super cozy. And oh. one thing I think you will love is they've been re-released in issues like this. <gasps> oh, yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the Constable Nick series by Nicholas Ray are just really cozy and also quite funny too. You know, like the people in the village, obviously, and <clears throat> the situations are never super serious, you know, like... <laughs> That seems to be checking just like check, 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 check for me. So yeah, Yuck. I'll definitely be investigating those. Mm -hmm. Investigating, see what I did there. I see what you did there. <laughs> that was very clever. <laughs> um, and then my, another cozy series that I just adore for coziness is the number one ladies detective agency. I know you tried one and you weren't a big fan. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. I chose this cover though, because look at the birds on here. I, do, I will say too, like the titles are always fabulous as well. Oh, that's one thing that I love. Like the, the titles of the books are always just, mm. and, but the reason they're so cozy, I find them so cozy is, I mean, she is investigating, you know, multiple cases through a book, but so much of her time is just spent sitting down and talking to people and drinking endless cups of bush tea and just chatting, you know, and it's yeah. just so cozy and relaxing to me. And the other thing that that is cozy about it is how much love of the country is woven mm. through the stories. Like the, the main character, Precious Remotes Way, she loves Botswana. And it just comes out how much she loves her country and the people in it and the nature and the animals. And um, so, yeah, I, I just find that cozy as well. So oh, I that's do, lovely. I do love that series. And then the last one that I that I, is cozy and also hilarious are the Lillian Beckwith books. Have you ever read L Lillian Beckwith? No. OK, so these. what's great about these is. I think they're fiction, but they are heavily based on her own life, on her own experiences. Yes. So she, at some point in her life, moved to the Hebrides in Scotland. Ooh. And so it's about her experiences on an island in Scotland. And like, they oh are God. just hilarious. This is, I think this is the first one, The Hills is Lonely. And this mm -hmm. one was written in the 50s. Wow. Uh, yeah, 59. And so she writes, she's looking for a quiet, secluded part of the country. And she gets a letter back from someone who has a croft in the Hebrides. And the letter says, partly says this, surely it's that quiet, even the sheeps themselves on the hills is lonely. And as to the sea, it's that near as I use it myself every day for the refusals. <laughs> 
so yes, yeah, so her life trying to figure out how to live in the Hebrides, and then also like she can't understand anybody. <laughs> Because their issue. accents are so strong, but so here's another one. Wow. The loud hello. Uh, a rope in case. This one was hilarious. Oh, and uh, beautiful just. Wow. And a shine of rainbows. So there you go. Like if you just want, they're just so cozy, um, but also just really funny kind of slice of life kind of stories. Oh, Boy, I am so excited to investigate so many things on your list. Yeah, so that's it. Those are my 10 things. Oh, thank you, Janelle. This was so fun. And I think people are really going to enjoy it. And I'll put in the description box all of the things so you don't have to worry about scrambling on Google, everyone. Thank you, okay. everyone, for watching. And thanks, Janelle, for being a guest. Thank you so much for having me. This was really fun.